there are some maps that are just better than others. Here are the top 5 multiplayer maps in Populous the Beginning. There comes a time when you need to settle the score. On two separate pseudo peninsulas, Eye of the Storm pits you against a single opponent. These tribes offer much terrain to build on and are home to many wildmen for you to convert to your tribe. With three points of attack, you can opt to gung ho it within minutes and strike your opponent from all directions, or hold off and boom your economy to try and overpower your enemy with raw mana. However, with your reincarnation site away from the mainland, losing your shaman leaves you vulnerable for longer, emphasising the importance of keeping her alive. The map is far from perfect, the higher wildman count on the island of the Red Tribe struggles to establish this map as a fair fight, and the centre stone head providing the lacklustre erode offers little incentive to fight for control over. All in all, Eye of the Storm is a great two player map for settling differences, as well as developing and improving a variety of skills. There was a time in Populous history that when you wanted a nice relaxing game, or you didn't want to wait for a fourth player, you could suggest a three player map without being told STFU plus one. When it came to selecting which map, the choice was obvious. Named after the elusive fantasy of many red blooded males, three way tricks us into thinking Populous is nothing but a pleasant village building simulator. With its pleasing to the eye textures, calming atmosphere and secluded islands, you could be forgiving for thinking this map is all about romantic boat rides and sharing stories by the fire. Once you notice your opponent gunning for no man's land to begin expanding their settlement, the illusion will soon wear off and the war will commence. Three Way is a fun little map that is suited for experimenting with different restrictions and that offers a lot of replay value. Should I connect to my ally? Should I connect to my enemy? Should I head towards the middle? Should I fill in my crater? Why the f*** am I red? These are all questions you will be asking yourself at the beginning of Craters. This level places you in a crater, one of four, with the others being occupied by your enemies or allies and you need to make the most out of what little land you are given. With few wildmen and fewer trees, the map still plays at a surprisingly fast pace. More trees are available on nearby islands and the centre of the map is home to an abundance of wildmen as well as a handful of trees. On top of this, Stoneheads offer some of the most powerful spells in Erode, Firestorm and the mighty Volcano. The freedom to play how you desire is what makes this map so great. Do I trust my ally to handle his opponent? Shall we attack an enemy together? Should I offer the support of my followers whilst I attack another direction? Should I go secure the centre? Securing the centre of the map can be a game changer, and whilst Bullfrog incentivised this on many other maps, on Craters they got the balance just right. Sometimes a map can be so good that nobody plays it. Dead Sea is a map that holds no player's hand. Right from the go you are at war with your opponent, starting within a valley you must head out into the wasteland where you expand your settlement, convert wildmen to your tribe and attempt to secure important positions. Wide open spaces make it impossible to cover all angles, you will desire to have your shaman in god mode as she can't be in five places at once and what about those stone heads? Possibly the scariest selection of spells available on any multiplayer map, an angel of death in a dried out river? Check. Earthquake that can devastate a poorly constructed settlement? Check. Bloodlust in a game that requires many trained followers? Yes please. A volcano? Uh, yeah, I guess. Dead Sea grabs face off by the balls. Dead Sea flushes pressure points head down the toilet. Dead Sea does not take any prisoners. Dead Sea is a map that offers so much variety, yet its high skill level is what holds it back. And it's a damn shame. If you were to ask a group of populous players what the most intense and most enjoyable map was, you would hear answers like Face Off, Craters and Sesame Palace. And whilst only one of those could be correct, the vast majority of players would say Pressure Point. Simple on paper, Pressure Point has you play on higher land where trees and wildmen are available all around you and your enemy is close by. Teams are equal distance apart, connected via strips of land directly towards the enemy base and via the centre of the map, a location that is pivotal in securing the win. 
Easy to learn, but difficult to master. A player's overall skill level can be determined by how well they play on this map. And it is for this reason you will see pressure point used as a way to end all disputes. I'm better than you. 1v1 PP. F4 doesn't count. 1v1 PP. The Earth is flat. Uh, 1v1 PP. It's true that this level can offer the most intense action amongst equally skilled players, where games can last hours and the land can be unrecognisable by the end. In fact, the map can be so intense that the game will break. Pressure Point allows for varying strategies, though not as many as previous entries, they are player styles that epitomise what Populous Beginning is all about. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know, and if you want to see some other top 5 videos of Populous Beginning, let me know your suggestions in the comments below. If you liked the video, leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, maybe subscribe. You can see more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.